Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Amori. It's time to get to a uh, 404 boss, apparently, because uh, Rose's kind of blue screened of death on us. Oh. Oops. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I feel like I'm going through a blue screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, what's that? What monster is that? Also, hi, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, bit of a bit of a roster change for the next few parts because Ted couldn't make this session, uh, so Lewis is here. But both Lewis and I are under the weather, so if we sound a little congested and just absolutely fucking done with this shit, well, hey, we can finally relate to a <laughs> more. <laughs> so we're just it's it's method. I, I so. like that. I like that file extension. Dot o m o. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am kind of a fan. Of when games um, like pull up, pu pull the actual computer nature of video games into it. it, it it shouldn't be done all the time. It's the kind of thing that gets old fast <laughs> if you do it too much. But stuff like Doki Doki Literature Club or or Undertale or this, it's charming. It can be done right. Yeah, this is the only time it does it. So yeah. This boss is actually triggering some really bad memories. I have like when I first got the internet and when I first learned of emulation sites, I just wanted to download 35 kilobytes for Mario on the NES. <laughs> Why is it not finished? <laughs> like, please just finish the fucking download. How about when I'm downloading files for your video projects and for some reason Google Drive decides it doesn't want to download anything that's greater than 10 gigabytes, so it interrupts yeah. the, the goddamn file download and forces me to restart halfway through. <laughs> Unless I download them in huge zip file bundles, which is apparently okay. Google Drive is weird sometimes, okay? <laughs> Google Drive can kiss my ass with how uncertain it is with uh, certain files. Yeah. Ugh. And it's not a problem that you'll have right at this very moment, although it might be a problem you have at some un unknown moment in the future, because sometimes, like, they do a behind-the-scenes update or some shit, or some behind-the-scenes maintenance that throws something out of whack, and everyone has, this, like, a problem, and then that problem disappears after a few days, and they never say anything about it. No, because, like, it was, never, it was never there in the first place. So one of the things that I do like about this game's art style is the way it does that. Well, it doesn't do it in the dialogue boxes over here because RPG Maker is both incredibly flexible and incredibly limiting in different ways. But in in the battle scenes, the, the uh, character portraits will kind of like jitter around like that old kind of cartoon style. And I, I really, I, I really like it. I like that style. <laughs> yeah, I, I always think of uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Uh, that's always my original uh, comparison. Ed, Ed, and Eddie is not the exact same thing, but it is a good, um, it is a good, uh, a good example of that kind of thing in action. Yeah. Like uh, in in art school, you're encouraged to you know have fun with that because and if it, if, if an image is constantly moving, the audience is constantly engaged. Uh, even if it's even if it's just a minute thing, it's just like the the line art jittering. Yeah, it kind of it kind of gives an illusion of smoother animation to an otherwise kind of basic animation. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't been here this entire time. Obviously, I have, however, been listening to the commentaries in editing. So I often find myself wanting to interject on things that you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm powerless. <laughs> One of them was dungeon crawlers. Dungeons and RPGs, you know? And uh, yeah. Ted had a lot to say, but most of what he had to say was from y'all's hyper-casual JRPG uh, genre, you know? Because I'm the only one in this group who plays the real dungeon crawlers. Fucking hell, up, Lewis. That just makes you a bigger loser. <laughs> I am. I am approaching the end. I am approaching the the final main quest of Daggerfall as we speak. So, mm -hmm. uh, dungeon crawling. <laughs> so who's the real loser? Huh? <laughs> dungeon crawling was on my mind, but uh, 
Okay. All I really wanted to say is that there are plenty of, uh, there are actually plenty of dungeon crawlers. They're just Bethesda games. Because Bethesda seems to assume that all their players want to dive into a million, million dungeons in any game they play. Huh. It's all about the loot loop, you know? Uh, the loot loop. Yeah, you go into a dungeon, you pick up everything that's not nailed down, you run back to the front of the dungeon, you dump all your loot into the cart and or a conveniently placed container if the game doesn't have a cart, and then you run back to where you were and you continue mapping out the dungeon. How many times you have to do this is entirely dependent on how mu how, how big your carry capacity is <laughs> and how much useless armor the enemies are dropping in that particular dungeon. Ugh. Is that a lot, usually? Depends. If you're fighting a lot of humans, they'll have a lot of useless leather and uh, chainmail armor or whatever the game's equivalent is. If you're fighting a lot of demons and monsters, they'll usually drop, like, ingredients and, and sometimes just plain money. So you'll be picking up more, um, but it'll weigh less most of the time. Also, the fuck... Is that guy? Uh, it's Pluto. Pluto? I uh, know. I was. I, what's the name of the guy who did the? Um, he has a moon for a mask. <laughs> oh, Yoko Taro. That guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what's Yoko Taro doing here? I don't know. Yoko Taro wishes he had arms this swole. Let's be real. Although once he does. God help us. Yeah, you're right. This is a Yoko Taro. This is the Spacer's Choice guy from Outer Worlds. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Okay, it was a bit of a meme when that game came out, but although the game's not like super du duper amazing, so the meme didn't last long. Um, there's a salesperson at a shop on a particular planet who wears this big ass bulbous mask um, of a moon with a face on it. He's the mascot for Spacer's Choice, the budget. Uh, food product company. They they don't make the best. You, you tried the best. Now now try the rest. That's their slogan. They make really shitty products for for like really low prices. So this mascot is is the shopkeeper, I think, or else, or maybe he's just a mascot. He talks in this hilarious bored voice the entire time. It's it's um, it's hard to express how funny it is. <laughs> By just explaining it. So Pluto is our fast travel? Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, now I'm, like, reading all this dialogue in the Spacer's Choice Guy's voice <laughs> in my head. Uh, I'm never going to stop doing that. For some reason, the first voice that came to my head was um, this guy from Kid Icarus Uprising. It was Pyron. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that was Troy Baker, actually, though, thinking back. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. God, remember that game? Whatever happened to that game? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm actually a little bit curious. Curious enough that I might actually read the comments for once. Um, what What do you all out there in reality land hear in your head when you read dialogue? Like, do, have you played so much Oblivion that everyone just sounds like Michael Bell? Uh Do you, like, make these really melodramatic voices for everyone in your head? Do you not read the voice read the dialogue and uh, uh, um in your head at all do you just like sort of skim through it and rapid fire your way because i know some people do that but like <laughs> what does your narrative voice sound like for 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 characters and games and books and stuff i want to know i for one like skimming through the comments and whenever we do rpgs that sometimes i just well most of the time i just don't have anything fucking interesting to say <laughs> <laughs> uh, most times i'll just give your comment a like and then move on or give you a block if you're a dipshit but you know it's still yeah uh i just like i tend to avoid the comment section itself uh, because I don't need the extra stress in my life from the dipshits. So I, this is not even brain scratch, like specifically, like any comment section, like outside of my own, I tend to because 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 I'll, I'll I'll read the comments in my videos. Again, same rule applies. I mean, I I don't always have anything to say, so I don't respond. I, at most, I'll give you a heart and give you a like uh, if I find your comment interesting. Uh, but most of the time I don't because uh, one thing that I like to do when I just got a little bit of time to like 
watch a clip of an old movie. I like to watch is that fuck. There are so many boomers in the comment section <laughs> that think cinema died 30 years ago <laughs> and that uh, the MCU ruined everything. I was like, you know, the MCU didn't start until like 30 years after you made this movie. Uh, and it's like, it's that same fucking comment in any clip of old movies from like the early 90s and the 80s. <laughs> like they don't make movies like this anymore, man. I was like, you're just you just self reported yourself that you don't watch many movies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I do understand where the sentiment comes from, but a lot of people are just parroting it without really thinking about it. There's a certain style of dialogue writing and presentation that was popularized more recently by the Marvel movies that a lot of movies have been adopting because they know it's what people like. But the thing is, the thing about that is, and uh, you know, uh, stay with me now. Uh, movies have been doing that kind of thing with whatever is popular since the Stone Age, before movies existed. <laughs> we used to call them books, but, you know, <laughs> it's just it's just how popular writing operates, you know. So is there a function to like tagging out the party leader like that? Yeah, they use two different things on the overworld. Oh, so we've got a wild arms thing going on. That's nice. Yeah. Amori can cut. Amori can cut things down. Uh, Aubrey bash things. Kel can uh, hit things with his uh, throwing arm, and Hero will activate certain switches. Oh, interacting with the overworld. It's very mystic. Very mystic quest. Well, it, it, it's a lot more wild arms to me because it, in the wild arms games, well, the first three. Uh, every character has a set of tools that you can acquire throughout the game. You usually, like, get one really early on, and you obtain two more for each character as you progress through the game. Some of them are hidden, so you might not necessarily find them. Um, and they uh, enable you to do certain things during, during dungeon exploration. Like, if a character has a boomerang, you can throw the boomerang to hit a switch. A character has a... Uh, a f a, like they can throw a fire card to light torches or they can shoot out I a, a beam of ice magic to extinguish torches, that kind of thing. Um, and then of course there are bombs, the most obvious of obvious tools. What the deuces? I mean, this optional, optional boss. Optional boss. Huh. I do like the crayon style of the art in this game. It does give it a very distinctive visual feel. That's kind of a problem with a lot of RPG Maker games, even the good ones, is that they often look like RPG Maker games. They have a particular style of sprite, and they are very grid-based. Actually, that's another thing I wanted to interject on when you brought it up in one of the parts. Um, Ted actually landed on the right answer. RPG Maker is hella limited, in the way it handles tool sets, uh, tile sets, tool sets, tile sets. It so everything has to be a grid, and um, I don't think it's actually possible to make a more organic looking tile set without running out of space on your tile set. Specifically, an RPG maker like itself, you mean? Yes, you'll right. have for for a, for an area. What you'll have is this big block of graphics called a tile set, and you'll select tiles out of that big block of graphics and assemble them in the area. And I think yeah. there's there's there, there, there's a hard limit, I think, to how many tiles you can have available to use when building a single area. So it's actually like like the kind of naturalistic curving of roads or or. Um, or landscapes that you would see in a more handcrafted game is um, it would require you to have a lot of madly specific tools and that would increase why do I keep seeing tools tiles and that would increase the number of tiles you would need in a single tile set yeah because you need tiles that go in a straight line you need tiles that curve you need tiles yeah. that reverse the tiles and to achieve a different effect yeah i mean it's a very old school way of designing games because in, you, you you dig into like the assets of old games from the snes and nes era you'll see what looks to be just a bunch of garbage when in actuality it's the game's tile set that they make the graphics from yeah 
Yeah, so the game will just reference a particular square on a particular block of graphics and yeah. pull that out for each tile. Um, the other thing about RPG Maker is that movement is very grid-based, like an old yes. RPG. There are some RPG Maker games that implement diagonal movement, but it's usually kind of kind of jank. Um, the thing about RPG Maker is if that if you know a particular programming language, I think it's Ruby. Um, I could be wrong. If you know a particular programming language, you can do almost anything with it. But as far as I know, the tile set problem is something that you can't really get around. Or at least maybe you can, but it would take an inordinate amount of, of uh, programming gymnastics. Well, is RPG Maker uh, an entity in of itself, or is it like based off of Unity or something like that? Uh, it's, it's, it's its own thing. It's okay. uh, it's it's been a series since um, like the '90s, not just on consoles. Although a lot of people did only hear about it on consoles because we didn't get the PC version of, for, for, versions officially for years and years and years. We did get unofficial PC releases, the Don Miguel port, for example. Um, but uh, it took a while for them to realize hey we can sell this stuff in america and stuff so they finally did so now you can america, get a bunch of but they smell <laughs> now you can get a bunch of rpg maker stuff um like and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with rpg maker too like for example pokemon essentials which basically lets you like build almost one-to-one -one Game Boy Advance style Pokemon games. Um, it's like, I think actually like the, the, the current version of Essential <laughs> sort of exists in between Advance and DS, it's weird. Fucking Pokemon company is like, fuck around and find out I <laughs> goddamn dare you. <laughs> well, you know, they uh, the, the Pokemon RPG Maker fan game scene is popping. And but yes, uh, it is. they are not like uh, they they can't really stop it. So unless no, someone does, I, I, I don't get into the scene myself, but Nora does, and Nora like like lives for that kind of shit. And it's it's kind of amazing, <laughs> like just how like true to form those games end up looking, looking and feeling. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, there are game design issues that I have with some of them. That is a nice victory animation. I'm gonna I was try. waiting for the credits to roll. <laughs> like, no, that, like, that, that's, our, that's our super attack on our victory <laughs> animation. Oh, that's the all-out attack. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Uh, rest in peace, Aki, who goes a voice actor. I wonder if the new one will be able to meme it up with that particular line. Probably not. What well, specifically? I don't know what you're talking oh. about. Uh, Persona 3's remake comes out in like a week. Right, a week, yeah. Yeah, and all the voice actors got changed out. So um, there's a meme where Akihiko, he says like before an all-out attack, if he's the one who speaks, one of his lines is, I've been waiting for this! <laughs> and it's the way the voice actor says it that is uh, particularly meme -y. Is uh, he holding a copy of Persona 3 remake as he's saying that? <laughs> he might. <laughs> uh, well... They're probably going to bust that meme out when they finally add the female protagonist as DLC two years down the line. Um, because, you know, that's a joke on the fact that Akihiko can romance the female protagonist. Ha, ha, ha. It's funny. The joke writes itself, which means it's obvious and unfunny. Don't do it. Ah, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. We completed a side quest trying to get the flower puzzle to the girl who wants one. Is there something that you unlock for doing all the optional bosses, or is it just something you do for achievement's sake? Achievement's sake, and you get good experience games. You, know. you got oh, okay. You got a Daisy from Daisy. Okay. Okay, so this is one of those games where you do get EXP for fighting bosses and shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like I, I'm getting so used to like later Final Fantasies where you just get like ability points for finishing bosses. I guess like to complement doing a low level run or some other shit. Yeah, but it's so weird when you're going back to older games where it's like, oh no, the boss. Well, well, fuck my low level run because the boss just gave me a shitload of experience <laughs> and now it's ruined. 